there and welcome back to Forza Top Gear Labs Rivals, the spin-off where we pit a couple of cars with common ground and close PIs against each other to see which one comes out on top. Today we are taking a look at two muscle cars from opposite sides of the globe designed to race. Firstly, the Ford Falcon GTH O Phase 4. In 1972, Ford Australia launched the XA series of Falcon, a very important car indeed as it was the first Falcon to be designed and built from the ground up by the Australians. Designed to be larger and provide more room, the XA was the success it needed to be, and the Falcon went on to be a cornerstone of Aussie car culture. However, the XA had an evil side. Enter the GTH O Phase 4. It was designed to run in the Group E Series production touring car series, which was becoming a battleground at the time. Ford, Holden and Chrysler were all trying to outdo each other by getting the biggest engines they could squeeze into their respective cars, and no prize was greater than the Bathurst 500. As with many a series, Group E required road-going homologation cars to be built, and this is such a car. With over 400 horsepower, the Falcon would have been one of the fastest road cars of its day, and unfortunately, that was an issue for the Australian media. The Sun published an article entitled 160 mph per hour supercars soon, speaking of the horror that the general public could buy cars capable of such speeds. This of course caught the eye of the Australian government and eventually the PR hit simply wasn't worth it. The Falcon GTHO Phase 4 would be shelved with just one road car built and three race cars that wouldn't see any official use. A sad ending for a promising car. God bless the bloody media eh? Next, the Plymouth Cuda 426 Hemi. While introduced in 1964, our story begins in 1970, with the Barracuda switching to the Chrysler E-body platform used also by the Dodge Challenger. The name shortened to Cuda would be used for high-performance variants available only with V8 engines, with the legendary 426 cubic inch Hemi V8 being the jewel of the range. While stateside, the Cuda would see limited success running in Trans Am, the real success would come in an unlikely place, France. In 1970, the car was directly imported to Paris and used for Group 1 racing. Driven by the man responsible for the French Chrysler racing efforts, Henry Sherman, the results were striking, with it going on to be the most decorated Group 1 racing car of the 1970s in France. With over 60 victories at various circuits and hill climb events, winning four championships within its three-year racing career. However, new management at Chrysler would see the competition department dissolved, and the Cuda would eventually be lost. Happily, however, it was found in the south of France, daily driven with the owner being entirely unaware of its racing past. Now fully restored to race spec, the French Cuda stands proud in full racing colours, and even has a documentary documenting the history and restoration of the car. Despite not being as successful racing stateside, the Cuda has become a muscle car icon, and is one of the most valuable and collectible cars from its era. So there you go, two legends for completely different reasons. Let's see how they stack up on track. On the track we are then, and we begin with the 1972 Ford Falcon GTH O Phase 4, 410 horsepower, 364 foot pound torque, 3,461 pounds of weight. Despite being what I would suggest is probably the bigger car of the day, this is the lightest car here today, it is the lowest on power and it is by far and away the lowest on torque compared to the Cuda, so this is our underdog lightweight car for the day, which would be fine, but unfortunately there's a bit of an issue we'll get into in a second. Firstly, I do really like the Phase 4 Falcon, this car has a fascinating history. Again, only one road car being built, this car is pink, which I would imagine would be a factory colour for this car, but uh, unfortunately the only one road car that exists in real life is green, which is the default colour for this car in game. The race cars I believe are actually road legal in Australia, like they have the plates and stuff on them now and they're in the hands of various collectors and so on, so uh, at least they weren't all destroyed, although one was in a crash, although that's because it was used for racing, which I guess is what it was born to do. As far as this car goes to drive, uh, it is got a few issues. One is it has silly long gears. First gear is ridiculously long in this car. I think it goes up to 85 miles per hour or something ridiculous. Uh, it's insane. It's very floaty. It is decently quick in a straight line once it's around the power band, but the problem is the gears are just so awful. You barely get into third gear in this thing, and that really does hurt this car an awful, awful lot. 
Uh, next up, the challenger for the day, the 1971 Plymouth Cuda 426 Hemi, 425 horsepower, 490 foot pound torque, 3,880 pounds of weight. Again, also in fetching pink. Uh, this is much, much more up on torque, 15 more horsepower, although it does weigh a fair bit more. Of course, the uh, the big decider on this one, and you can probably hear it as it goes around, is the gearbox is better than in this, so uh, you can probably imagine how my opinions change. Ultimately, when it comes to the Plymouth Cuda, I'm not a massive fan of this car, it just doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I get it's legendary, I do prefer the 1970 model with the single headlights and different rear end. Uh, so if I was personally picking on, I wouldn't pick this 1971 variant, but uh, for me, I don't know, it's sort of a more inferior version of the Dodge Challenger that we already have in the game for me personally, and I'd much rather drive the Challenger because I think it looks better. Anyways. As far as the Cuda goes to drive, it is a better overall car than the Falcon. Much easier to use. It's not quite as quick on the straights though, uh, you know, so it doesn't quite have the lightness and again, the Falcon power-wise really isn't that far off. Of course, the one thing the Cuda has is a better gearbox and it also has more torque, which means it has more speed on demand. Whereas the Falcon, you know, once you get it in the Falcon sweet spot, the Falcon will blow this thing away, of course, getting the Falcon to the sweet spot is the bigger issue. However, not quite as big of an issue as you'd think, as when it comes to the times, they're actually relatively close. The fastest car was the Cuda, going to 342nd place with a 128.959, puts in between a local motors rally fighter and a Lancia Stratos, quicker than a Charger Daytona, interestingly enough though. However, the GCHO Falcon goes into 349th place with a 129.186, not far off considering the NAF gearbox, and it goes in between a Chrysler Valiant Charger and the Dodge Coronet. It's interesting that the Valiant Charger with the standard slant 6, not the uh, what would have been the 160 mile per hour supercar engine that they were planning on putting it out, which I believe was either a bigger straight 6 or it was going to be a V8. I can't quite remember from my research, I'm sure. Uh, the comments will go ahead and fix that one up for me. So uh, yeah, no, despite its pretty awful gearbox, the Falcon actually did quite well. And ultimately, if I'm choosing which car I prefer from today, it is going to be the Falcon. If I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not really tied to either of these cars I've spoken before on this channel. I'm not a massive muscle car person. Uh, they don't do a whole lot for me, but I, you know, much prefer the GTHO's history. Don't get me wrong, that French Cuda is really cool, and looking at the pictures of it, that car is beautiful, but that's a sort of one specific car, while there's the GTHO Phase 4, I much prefer the story. I really wish we could have seen these cars sort of built and have versions of these cars, because I'm sure they would have been insane, but alas, the, uh, the sun ruins everything once again. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of Fort Top Gear Lap Arrivals. Do hope you've enjoyed. Join us next time on the main episode, which will be more German cars, and then come back for the next Rivals episode, where we're going to be taking a look at two Audi saloon cars, old versus new, and seeing which one is quicker. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, farewell. You know what I'm